Fan Appreciation Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, we're checking out a film from 2004. That movie is Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2. I want to make a point clear before I go a step further. This is like the fifth time I've attempted to record this intro. Almost every other time, I have just stopped saying anything out of pure hatred or I just start randomly swearing and screaming because, damn it, I don't want to watch this thing. <laughs> you see, guys, Baby Geniuses was a bad movie. In fact, I will probably... I, if I had to rank all the shitty family films I've watched on this series, Baby Geniuses would totally be in the top three. There's no way in hell it's sitting at number one because nothing is ever going to knock the Oogie Loves out of that top spot for worst family film covered in this series. Now, everybody who asked me to cover Baby Geniuses did it specifically so they'd ask me to cover Baby Geniuses 2 because apparently Baby Geniuses 2 is infinitely worse than Baby Geniuses. I don't even know if that's physically possible. Baby Geniuses was pretty goddamn bad. But yet, I'm here. And you know what? As much as I don't want to watch this, this fucking thing, I am almost curious. I have to see how bad this piece of shit really is. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I am not going into this thing expecting anything good, okay? As much as I like to normally go into these, into these videos hoping and praying for something good, Baby Geniuses 2 has such a terrible reputation that it would be foolhardy for me to go into this thing and actually expect something good. So I know I'm walking into an absolute dumpster fire of a film. The question is how bad is the dumpster fire really going to be? And I am somewhat curious. As 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 loathed as I am to like to actually hit play, I almost have to, if for no other reason than out of morbid curiosity. So it's time now, guys, to see if this thing is really as big a cinematic abortion as people have made it out to be. And I'm going to find out how bad this son of a bitch is going to be right now. So without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and endure Super Babies Baby Geniuses 2. You know, guys, I really thought this movie would start off at least kind of interesting and slowly turn turn to shit. No, no. This thing fucking started off bad, and it's getting worse. Oh, my God. Everything, guys, from voice acting to the mouth movement. The mouth movements on these kids is worse here than it was in the first film. And it was shit there. How the fuck do you get worse five years later? Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, guys. I think, actually, the sheer the sheer magnitude of dog shit I'm watching here is starting, is starting to get to me. And I'm not even 20 minutes in yet. Fuck me dead. This sucks. You know, guys, I have a question about this movie. I don't think it's going to answer it, but I'm going to ask anyway. So our villain, Biscayne, was like a Nazi in the 50s, somehow. His big villain back then was this baby named Kahuna. We're now 50 years hence. Biscayne is aged. Kahuna hasn't. How is that possible? I understand, guys, I'm asking for something incredibly realistic and kind of dumb for a movie this stupid. But God damn it, I would like an answer. How has he not aged? It's actually kind of bugging me slightly. Alright, guys, two things. One, I, I was wrong when I said 50s. It was in the 1960s. That still does not explain why the hell Biscayne... Back then was decked out in full Nazi garb minus, like, the armband and the SS pins. I still don't understand that. Two, they actually did explain exactly how Kahuna has not aged. Apparently, his father, back after the First World War, created a formula that prevents aging and makes you super strong and super intelligent, yada, yada, yada. It's a really stupid answer, but... God damn it, at least they answered it. As stupid as it fucking was. Still doesn't explain the whole Nazis in 1960, but, oh, 1962 or whatever the fuck year the little opening story was set in. Still, 
That part is not explained, but at least they explained what Kahuna has an age. It's a stupid explanation, but you know what? I'm happy that they at least explained it. Why isn't this piece of shit finished yet? No, guys, really. I am... I'm feeling almost physical pain watching this thing. It is that fucking bad. I feel my soul getting slowly sucked out of my very body watching this fucking turd. I would love it if there was any, any kind of redeeming quality to this movie. But there is none. Almost everything I fucking see is just mountains of failure. It's honestly a little bit fucking depressing just how bad this piece of shit really is, guys. Well, guys, that was Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2. Let's just, uh, shut that off and, uh, ooh. Anyway. <laughs> God damn it. Um, you know what? Let's just... Let's just try to dive into this goddamn thing. Uh, let's start with the writing. Holy fuck. The you know what? When I watched Baby Geniuses, the first Baby Geniuses, I thought that the writing was fucking stupid there. I thought that was some of the most inane, retarded writing I'd seen in a long time. Super Baby's Baby Geniuses 2 is worse. This is some of the most juvenile dog shit I have ever watched, and I've witnessed children's films for this series. Most of them are not nearly as insultingly stupid as what I just saw here. Now, I am happy that they were able to explain why this one super kid, Kahuna, hasn't aged since the 1960s. 1962, or whatever the fuck the flashback was set in. You know... It was kind of a stupid explanation. It's like, oh, well, he doesn't age because of a fucking super serum that he, you know, that he, you know, took. Uh, that his father made. Oh, but he has this other serum that he made now in order to jack himself up further. That's all fucking natural and only works with his friggin' DNA because fuck you, that's why. You know, okay, all of that's fine. It's stupid, but at least it was an explanation. Unfortunately, nothing else here gets any kind of a reasonable explanation. So, we have this kid, Kahuna, is this, like, super spy who's been helping kids for decades. Apparently, every single time that there is a child, child problem, a problem involving kids, Kahuna is there to save them. Which is almost immediately kneecapped by the fact that the back wall of Kahuna's little, like, convoyance center in his little, like, baby cave is full of posters for missing children. I hope and pray that those are not posters of actual missing children, but let's just skip that and move on to the fact that if Kahuna is the super baby who's able to save all kids everywhere, anytime, for whatever purpose, because he has all these gadgets, all these gizmos, and he has this rocket-powered baby fucking buggy... Why are there posters of missing children on the back wall? You'd think he'd be able to use his satellite systems and all this other shit in order to find it. That one single selection of prop, putting up all those posters in the back, shows that Kahuna's really fucking awful at his goddamn job. But oh well, again, that, that is minor. I'm making a big deal out of a background prop, and I probably shouldn't be. But holy shit, that, that guy's is like the tip that there is the tip of the dog shit iceberg that this that is this fucking movie. So let's see. Um, we have our villain Kane, who was a German soldier back in the 1960s, was dressed in a Nazi uniform. Still, don't know. I, I could have sworn that they that they kind of that they kind of discontinued those uniforms after World War II, but. What do I know? I honestly am not a you know expert on German on German history. It just looked weird that he was in a noticeably SS-ish Nazi uniform in the 1960s. That just didn't make a lick of sense to me. But oh well, I'm again that's that's fucking minor. I'm going to let that go. But uh, Kane, as he was known then, Biscayne as he's known now, because apparently the guy is about as creative as a doorstop. Uh is trying to take over the world using a cable signal because he knows millions of people are watching cable. So he's going to brainwash them into buying his products, buying this, buying this, buying this, uh, and it's all going to be through his children's network because apparently everybody tunes into children's television at all times. Well, 
I guess, considering all of the adults who complain about fucking car, who complain about cartoons today, that could very well be true. But that's not normally where I tune in when I first turn on my TV. I guess that's just me. But anyway, his big, big plan is to brainwash everybody into buying all of his products and his company stock. And basically, he's going to financially conquer the world using cable television. And Kahuna and these four kids are going to stop him. Uh, just the plot kind of goes south from there, if that's even possible. Because the babies climb into this, like... They, they, because the babies all make their way to Kahuna's little cave, and there's this, like, there's this, like, spot where they stand, and it turns them into superheroes, and their powers are fucking lame as shit and stupid as fuck, and apparently all of, and apparently all of them the first time around bitch because their power set doesn't match their personality, which they then talk about how, oh, well, the thing actually bases it on the real fucking you and other dumb bullshit guys. The writing here is stupid. It is not stupid on a child level. It is not stupid on a toddler level. This thing here is stupid on a brain-dead level, okay? I understand when you make films for children, you are, you are supposed to write to that child's intelligence level. I totally understand that. And when you're making a family film, you have to write at that level, but then also have a few things which are which are then going to appeal to older people who may be tuning in. This movie's solution to that was to essentially write was to essentially write a story which would only be entertaining to of all things like para would be maybe like germs and paramecium's, you know, and then and then the references for older folk is really forced shoehorn in references to shit like Casa fucking Blanca. It was bad. It was just fucking awful. Our characters here are shallow as shit. I do not remember a single character's name except for Kahuna and fucking and fucking Biscayne because they're the only characters who um have any level of depth. Biscayne's ba big thing outside of being evil is that he has one fucked up leg because of what happened between him and Kahuna back in 1962 or whatever the fuck that flashback was. And unfortunately, the problem with that is that John Voight apparently does not fucking know how to fake a limp constantly. Because in about three quarters of his scenes, he is moving just fine with no with no sign of a fucking limp from his bad leg. And then... And then sometimes it, like, dings off in his head, wait, yeah, uh, my character's leg is fucked up, and then he begins to, like, hobble around a little bit as he fucking walks. It looked awful. It looked fucking terrible. And really, the very fact that the only thing he has for depth is his leg is kind of fucked up, as long as the actor remembers that he has a fucked up leg, that is it for his, you know, depth. There's nothing else here. Every single character has no personality at all. You could literally slot in and out. Every single character here. The only other one who has any kind of personality, and I don't even remember the fucking baby's name, but the closest thing that he has to personality is that he's black. No, I am not joking. The kid has this real, real noticeable uh, urban accent, and that's it for his fucking personality is he talks in a way that most people perceive black people to fucking talk. It's horrible. In fact, it honestly is borderline fucking racist, but shit, I honestly am not going to complain about that because at least that's personality. That's more than any other character has. Because every other character, like, there, there, there is, like, one who's all big and beefy and is kind of sort of a wuss, and then there's the little fucking wussy-ass dude who apparently is just there for the sake of being there, and he's apparently related to Kahuna, who's also related to the two main babies from the first film, somehow. Uh, just the whole thing, guys, just falls to fucking pieces. Writing here was hideous from start to finish. I could, I could probably sit down and itemize faults in every fucking second of this goddamned movie. There was nothing positive here in terms of writing. Now, I would have totally been fine with a, with a horrible script if, if the cast gave even the slightest inkling of a fuck, and none of them did. We had John Voight, who completely botched the fact that his character is supposed to have a limp nine times out, out of ten. We have Scott fucking Bayo getting his first noticeable acting fucking job in years. Completely phoning it in because Scott because Scott Bayo apparently took a massive knock to the head after he finished working on Charles after working on Charles in charge and forgot how to 
fucking act. Everybody else in this film isn't trying, but the worst, fucking worst, is the voice acting. Let me explain. In both Baby Geniuses and Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2, they had actors come in and dub in the spoken dialogue of the babies. Now, now the way that they are able to achieve this and make it, I guess, look kind of, kind of presentable on camera is they digitally move the mouths of these children. They didn't do that a lot here. Instead, they basically were just filming random shots of these babies as they're sitting there, like, flapping around their hands and going, nah, 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 or whatever the fuck babies do. And then the actors are supposed to try to follow those mouth flaps. So everyone sounds stilted and unnatural. So you will have a baby who sounds like this. Because he's trying to match the mouth flaps on the spastic little retard he's voicing. It sounds like that. All of them. Every fucking one. And if they didn't have a suitable, like, bit of alarm from the babies, then they would digitally do the whole mouth fucking movement thing. And it looks worse here than it did in the first film. This thing was made five years later. They still couldn't get mouth movements to look right. That is fucked in the head. I know that's more special effects, but God damn it, it was shit. Look, look, okay, um, maybe, just maybe, if they would have bothered to actually move the mouths of all of these kids digitally and given the voice actors a chance to fucking try, maybe then we might have had some effort. Instead, all of them have these really odd, odd pauses or they are drawing out words to try to match a mouth movement. And it looks and sounds like shit. It's fucking terrible. It actually, at times, looks almost as if they were trying to train these kids who are all probably old enough to just start speaking uh, they were basically trying to get them to mouth out the lines, and unfortunately, because they're, you know, babies, they don't really have the skill to actually, you know, act, act properly, so they sit there, I wanna make a and then the actor has to try to match that shit, that's fucking awful, but you know what? As much as people probably think I'm going to slam these babies for not knowing how to act, I can't because they're babies. Babies don't know how to act. That is why you digitally move their fucking mouths because they can't act. Perhaps maybe if you found shots where they weren't sitting there and like slapping their hands on the fucking table going nah, 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 and trying to dub over that. Maybe it would have looked better. Probably wouldn't have saved this movie from being complete shit, but god damn it, it would have shown some effort. Anyway, uh, <laughs> acting here is fucking disastrous. I've already talked about some of the special effects, but let's, but let's dive further into the shit pit that is special effects in this goddamned thing. Let's talk about the CG. Holy mother of fuck. This thing was made in 2004, right? 2004. You'd think by 2004, CG in most movies was kind of decent. Why then is all of this shit so ugly and primitive and shit? I don't want to hear it's because the movie was made on just $19 million. Yeah, I, I looked up the fucking budget. I was kind of curious. All right. There is no way in hell that $19 million essentially was there to cover to cover John Voight and Scott and, and, and Scott fucking Bayo and everything else was just left to pocket change and lint. Okay, there's no way in hell you paid John Voight and Scott Bayo so much that it burned through most of the $19 million budget, okay? You could have spent a little bit more time making that CG look a little bit less shit, especially on things such as a flying fucking CD, which apparently is able to move on its own, so it's sitting there and it's like whipping and curling and all this other shit. Apparently that was because Kahuna was controlling the fucking thing. I have a question about that fucking disc. Just give me a minute. Because that disc is a prominent plot, plot heavy thing here, okay? That fucking disc is essentially Biscayne's big, big plan. Is his big, is his big brain, is his big brain, brain fucking washing code is on this disc. And Kahuna gets it. And the other kids have it. And Scott fucking Bayo's got it for, for like a second. Did it ever dawn on any of these spastic faggots to just snap the disc in two? And then there and then thereby 100% stop any plan Biscayne might have had? 
I'm sorry, guys. That might have actually made a little bit of sense, but no, no, of course not. <laughs> no, no, no. We have no. We have to have comedy here, as the babies are beating up on grown people with their retarded fucking powers. God, fucking, fuck this movie. Anyway. <laughs> The CG here is fucking terrible in every single sense. There is one baby whose power is that he basically is like this giant rubber, rubber fucking ball with feet and he like bounces around. So there's this like CG model of him bouncing all over the fucking shot and it looks like shit. I honestly, I honestly am surprised that they were able to make any of the times he actually bounces into something look fucking decent. I guess, I, I, I guess if there's anything, the actors at least know how to fucking fall in a kind of sort of a believable way. But still, guys, the CG here is the, C, the CG here is terrible. No matter what it is, it, it honestly doesn't matter if it's babies' fucking mouths, you know, moving, or these idiots showing off their superpowers of that goddamn disc, or Kahuna's super super fucking buggy, which is able to turn into a helicopter because I guess that makes sense. It turns into a helicopter. <laughs> anyway, um, just all of that looks like shit. Looks fucking horrible. Okay, um. So yeah, special effects are fucking awful. Uh, I guess everything else is fine, though. I'm talking everything on, like, a technical level is fine. Our camera work is fine. Our sound mix is fine. Our score... Uh, the, the, the score is competent. I'm not gonna bitch about that too much. The one or two proper, like, songs we hear that aren't just ancillary background shit kind of suck, but, oh well, that's really, that's really nothing. But really, you know what? I... I was completely expecting camera work and sound mix and the score to at least be decent, so I was focusing more on special effects, acting, and writing, and those are all exactly the kind of dumpster fire I expected when I first started. So I'm not really shocked as much as, um, I'm actually kind of sort of disappointed in myself because I was dumb enough to watch this fucking thing. So when all said and done, guys, can I recommend Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2? Hell no. I could not recommend this thing under any circumstances. There's no way in fuck any child is going to want to watch this thing for more than five minutes without wanting to slam their head against the nearest wall and forget what few memories they, they may have in their head in the first place, but especially the memory of watching this fucking thing. This movie is shit. There's no way in hell I'm going, I'm going to recommend it because it sucks. It sucks for kids. It sucks for adults. And you know what? The most offensive part about this movie has nothing to do with the film itself. The movie was directed by Bob Clark. Bob Clark made some amazing movies in his lifetime. He made A Christmas Story. He made the Christmas Story sequel, My Summer Story. He made Porky's and Porky's 2. He made Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. He made Black Christmas. The man made great shit. This was the last thing he made before he died in a car accident. The very fact that this was the last thing that Bob Clark worked on in his fucking lifetime is nothing short of depressing. I absolutely hate the fact that his life went out on this fucking note. That sucks. And fuck this goddamned movie and every other human being who worked on it. Except I have to give props to Bob fucking Clark because I love the man's career so much. Minus this piece of fucking shit. And, well, baby geniuses, but that kind of gets tied in with this goddamn thing. The fact that Bob Clark never, never got to rebound from this thing pisses me off on a level that I never even thought was possible. Anyway, guys, Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2 came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was John. You can find his YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash PlayStation John 91. Please, guys, swing over there, check out everything he has. John, I really do want to thank you. I was dumb enough to put to put the uh, Baby Geniuses 2 pack on the wish list, and you were the one who sent it in. I had no idea that these movies were going to be as bad as they wound up being, but Frankly, uh, the very fact that I now that I now know that makes me feel a little bit better because now I've seen them, I never have to watch them again, and that's thanks to you. And for that, I thank you. You're fucking awesome, dude. Once more, that is youtubecom slash user slash PlayStation John ninety one. Now I mentioned a bunch of films that Bob Clark worked on. I've got a few of those on on Blu-ray. I'm gonna go and watch those. I'm gonna pretend that this never fucking existed. I'm going to pretend 
that Bob, that Bob Clark's career ended on a high note and didn't end on this fucking thing. So yeah, um, maybe I'll go watch Children Shouldn't Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Plus I still have to buy Porky's and Porky's 2. I still haven't gotten around to buying, to buying those yet. Maybe, maybe I'll go watch those. I'll watch Children, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things in A Christmas Story and I'm just going to pretend that, again, this never fucking happened. Anyway, my friends, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.